I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad everybody was okay. But I know it was frightening in those moments. Want to give you a last word on that? Well, uh, there's a lot that goes with this job. Uh, it uh, is, is clear that the, these demonstrators are, are opposed to the efforts of the DCCC to elect Democrats. Uh, they'll tell you that they're not trying to help Republicans, and obviously Republicans don't want that kind of help. Uh, but it, 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 many of them uh, believe that uh, by destroying and defeating the Democratic Party, they can advance their objectives. Democratic Congressman Brad Sherman experienced a protest at the DNC headquarters during a fundraiser on Wednesday evening that was so traumatizing that even a Fox News host was genuinely concerned about him. In fact, as Axios reports, one Democrat who was present at the DNC told Axios, it scared me more than January 6th, recounting that they were about to leave and return to the Capitol when police told them not to exit. So this must have been very serious for a Democrat to compare this to January 6th. So the question is, what happened that was so terrifying that the entire DNC had to be evacuated? Well, I'm going to show you, but be prepared. This is so horrifying, it's probably going to give you nightmares. light candles for the dead. I'm here today calling for a ceasefire to honor the 1,200 Israelis killed on October 7th, the more than 11,200 Palestinians killed since then, over 12,400 divine lights devastatingly extinguished. <laughs> I'm here to say not one more, to pray and to plead for those in power in our government to do everything they can to save lives, to free hostages, to send the prisoners home. Yeah. So peace activists, including many Jewish peace activists, lit candles to honor the dead. They locked arms and they peacefully chanted a protest song to encourage the people within the DNC headquarters with power, by the way, to support a ceasefire. They were totally peaceful, as you saw. Then the police showed up and started assaulting protesters and stepped on their candles and created chaos. So make no mistake about it, the scene did get violent, but you could thank the cops for that. And now these peaceful protesters are being smeared and used as a scapegoat in a desperate and shameless attempt to obscure their message because that message makes Democrats who are refusing to call for a ceasefire look bad. And that's exactly what people like Brad Sherman are doing. Lying about the demonstrators writing on Twitter was just evacuated from the DNC after pro-terrorist anti-Israel protesters grew violent, pepper spraying police officers and attempting to break into the building. Thankful to the police officers who stopped them and for helping me and my colleagues get out safely. He added, apparently these pro-Hamas demonstrators want Republicans to prevail in the next congressional election. Now, he then went on to parrot the same exact lie on CNN and then Fox News the next day, as you saw. Now, I'm assuming that he believes these protesters want to make Democrats look bad and help Republicans because they made them look bad during a DNC fundraiser. But boo fucking who you are in power. And since you're in power, they are encouraging you to do the right thing by peacefully exercising their First Amendment rights. But notice how despicable the framing was here. He literally called them pro terrorist and pro Hamas. These are his constituents. Do you think that these peace activists vote for Republicans? No, these are the Democratic Party's base. And they're not alone. 80% of Democrats want a ceasefire. So what does he do? He calls them pro-terrorists and attacks them. And then he goes on to cry about them on Fox News helping Republicans. He's saying they're helping Republicans, not him, as he bitches about his own constituents on Fox News. It's just insane. And guess what? The Republican House Speaker parroted Sherman's lies about his own base, denouncing the protests and also calling them pro-Hamas. I mean, good job, Brad Sherman. You handed Republicans an attack against your own constituents. That's not even fucking true. And now the media is going along with this narrative popularized by Brad Sherman because Capitol Police are now lying to make themselves look better 
after they were filmed brutalizing peaceful protesters. Axios explains the Capitol Police said in a statement that six officers were treated for injuries ranging from minor cuts to being pepper sprayed to being punched. One protester was arrested for an assault on an officer, they said. The Capitol Police told congressional staff in an alert Wednesday night that they were working to keep back approximately 150 people who are illegally and violently protesting. Now, listen, I'm not doubting that out of the entire crowd of 150 people that one protester may have gotten violent after they were antagonized by police. And I'm also not doubting that police officers were injured following the shitstorm that they caused. In fact, here's a video of a police officer getting struck. I bet they're going to blame the protesters for that too. So things like this are bound to happen amid chaos. But here's the thing. The police are lying. They're claiming that protesters pepper sprayed them, and there's zero evidence for this. But sometimes when police officers use pepper spray, the wind blows back towards them, and they effectively get pepper sprayed as well. So perhaps that happened. Perhaps that didn't even happen. But I don't know. But journalists who were there have emphatically denied this accusation, and for good reason. It's because they have evidence, which the police do not. For example, Semaphore reporter Dave Weigel points out, yeah, Sherman is wrong. I was outside the building and saw United States Capitol Police officer spray protesters, not vice versa. It's around the one minute mark in my video. We'll look at that in a moment. Lots of camera there. I just took a few videos because people tend to lie about these things. Now, we're going to watch this video, and as you're going to see, the police officers approach the protesters, and they begin pushing them. They begin assaulting these peaceful protesters as their arms are locked, and they're chanting, let Gaza live. And then you're going to see them pepper spray multiple people in this video. So you just saw the cops. They were caught in 4K, instigating violence and also pepper spraying multiple protesters, not the other way around. Yet they're claiming not only that the protesters were violent, but that they were the ones being pepper sprayed as they were seen on video pepper spraying protesters. Now, aside from the video footage, other journalists corroborate the account from the protesters. For example, journalist Chuck Modi, who was there, says, Dear White Wingers, violence at DNC last night was police initiated. I was also there on January 6th. You sound ridiculous. Now, he shared this footage from January 6th to show how ridiculous these comparisons are when the J6 protesters were clearly violent, whereas these anti-war protesters were not. And this January 6th comparison also ironically and hilariously came from people at the insurrection on January 6th like Chaya Rychek, who claims that protesters tried to enter the building. But Weigel confirms again, nobody tried to enter the building. They were trying to block off entrances, but had their backs turned to them. Now, on top of that, Raphael Shimonov writes, I've participated and documented, if not now, and Jewish Voice for Peace protests for almost 10 years. Never once did we arrive with any weapons. Every single time we took Kingian nonviolence. And journalists present last night, like Dave Weigel, confirmed the same. And on top of that, 
that the organizers of the event, if not now, and Jewish Voice for Peace confirm that it was indeed a peaceful protest and the cops were the ones that started the violence by assaulting peaceful protesters. Now, we've heard from the journalists, but I also want to get some perspectives from actual protesters because they confirm what journalists and the organizers of this event say. And this is footage from Chuck Modi, who again was there and confirmed that the protesters were being completely peaceful until the cops assaulted them. Now, I want to play the last video at length because it was incredibly cathartic to watch her passionate statement. So let's watch. We're outside of the DNC demanding that they have a ceasefire. We are peacefully protesting. We are talking. Stand with 80% of Americans who need a ceasefire for the people of Gaza. The police have come just threw me down the steps. I don't have a shoe on right now. They pepper sprayed us. They've been wrestling with us. We're doing shit right behind you right now. And we are demanding a ceasefire for the people of Gaza. And this is how they treat us. The violence that is going on, the training of the police and the IDF is hand in hand. We are peacefully protesting. Hundreds of people are out of the streets. And this is how they treat us. Attacked by Capitol Police somehow, some way. January 6th, they did not do their fucking jobs, but today they can do it. Today they can do it when it's black and brown people, when it's marginalized groups. Somehow, some way, they find the motherfucking strength to fucking shove people down on and fucking tear gas us. Peaceful fucking protesters. We are peaceful fucking protesters. At the end of the day, you see what the fuck they're doing. You see what the fuck they're doing. We are out here because there are 11,000 and counting. Palestinian people that have been slaughtered by the Zionist regime, that is Israel. We are out here because we are fucking tired of our fucking tax dollars going to kill children in another fucking country. That is why we are out here. And these fucking bitch ass pigs are part of the goddamn problem. Because these are the same motherfuckers that go over there and train with the fucking IDF. And look at them. Look at the way they fucking act. This is the militarized fucking police force. This is the shit that we deal with in America. Now just fucking imagine what those children and those men and those women and those fucking grandparents and Gaza are experiencing right now. That is the kind of person that I want to see leading this country. Not these feckless, spineless cowards like Brad Sherman. Now, by the way, for those unaware, that was a Fenny, who is a longtime activist, an amazing person. I would highly encourage you to follow her on Twitter. Her handle is Facts and Fire. Just incredible person. And I'm so glad that she was there to represent the protesters and give us the truth about the situation. Now, there is more footage online proving that the protesters were indeed peaceful. But I think that we've already established the case that they weren't being violent, the police were. But I do want to move on to the lies being spread about the protesters now that you know the truth. So since Capitol Police claimed that protesters were violent and pepper spraying police officers, there are some pundits who are taking the police's word as gospel, despite evidence to the contrary. Abby Phillips of CNN, for example, after she interviewed Brad Sherman, issued this clarification. Just to be clear, at the time of this interview, as we stated, we did not have information about the truth of this statement. Since then, Capitol Police did release a statement stating pepper spray was used against its officers. And as you can see, it's the same quote from Axios. So even though videos clearly show that the police were the ones who were being violent and instigated this entire kerfuffle, well, because Capitol Police say that the protesters were actually violent, we're just supposed to take their word for it. Because we all know that police officers never lie, right? Especially when there's video evidence proving that they're not being truthful. We're supposed to not believe our lying eyes. Seriously. 
Now it gets worse, believe it or not, because DMFI tweeted a video saying, does any real Democrat want to side with those violently assaulting the Democrats headquarters building? These thugs have more in common with Mark Wayne Mullen than with Democrats who won't be bullied into putting Hamas in position to launch more brutal attacks as they promised. Now, we've already watched quite a bit of videos, but I have to show you the video that they shared because they're trying to use this video to prove how violent these protesters were. But the video that they share shows the opposite. Just a reminder, that was the video that DMFI shared to prove that these protesters were the ones being violent. It feels like we're being gaslit, right? I mean, look at these protesters. They're being so violent. They're getting their arms violently pulled by police. How dare they violently throw themselves down the stairs and push themselves? Why are they being so violent? Now, to make matters worse, DMFI re-uploaded that video without crediting the original source, and I had to find out who this was so I could give them credit, and it was Chuck Modi. So they stole that video, and not only did they steal a video and re-upload it, but they're trying to make their case as to why the protesters were being violent when the video shows the opposite. It's just, it feels like we're living in the twilight zone. Do they honestly think that we're all stupid? Now, listen, I expect right-wingers and cops and DMFI to lie about these peaceful protesters, but you would think that a Democratic politician who wants his party to be successful, who expects votes from the people that they're demonizing to maybe not be so ruthless in smearing these protesters, but that's not what happened. So I want to go back to Brad Sherman's interview on Fox News, because now that you have the context, you're going to see that he was brazenly lying through his teeth, and it gets much worse. So first of all, why the Democratic Party headquarters for this? Do you know? Look, we had 250, 300,000 peaceful, permitted pro-Israel demonstrators on the 14th. This was a group of 200, but they felt that by breaking the law and by assaulting police officers, they could get perhaps some portion of the attention that 250 or 300,000 people got because they know that violence is a, a force multiplier when it comes to demonstrations. You know, I, I want to get into politics a little bit here. I mean, they, they targeted the DNC. They're angry with President Biden. They're angry with many of you because you're getting in the way of what? what why you? Well, the object here is uh, the attack, the Hamas object was to attack and kill as many Israelis as they could, 1,200 on uh, October 7th, retreat, regroup, and then do it again. And that's not me speaking, that's top Hamas leadership. And I think some of the demonstrators support that plan, others are duped into the idea that uh, somehow a, 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 a truce that allows Hamas to regroup and repeat uh, will bring peace, and obviously that isn't the case. We all want to cease fire. But the best way to get a ceasefire is for Hamas to release its hostages and disarm. And then the killing and the terrible scenes from, from Gaza uh, can stop. I'm glad you're OK. Gee, I wonder why a Fox News host would be so eager to bring on a Democratic politician who's willing to lie about his own base. Listen, that was despicable. He actually said the pro-peace protesters support terror attacks against Israeli civilians, or they're duped. Now, he can lie. He can feign ignorance about their motivations and what they want. But in that same interview, he admitted, inadvertently so, but nonetheless, he admitted that he knows what they want because he addressed it temporarily. He said, in truth, we all want a ceasefire. 
as he refuses to call for one. So as he demonizes and lies about these protesters, he still tries to placate them as if they're going to be enthusiastic about supporting him in 2024. But that right there was an admission that he knows that they want peace, but he is choosing to purposefully lie and smear them instead. Now, as angry as I know you are watching spineless cowards defame their own base like this, you have to understand that they're lying because you're winning. The pressure is working. The number of Democrats calling for a ceasefire is growing. We're now at 32 at the time that I record this video, with some Democrats like Representative Pocan and Blint joining calls for a ceasefire after previously opposing it. So that right there is why they're lying. Their lies are a sign of desperation. They're desperate because they're running out of excuses. The Democratic Party's base is growing increasingly frustrated with the party's unwillingness to do what the fuck their constituents want. So keep the pressure up. Go to ceasefiretoday.com and continue to demand action from Democrats because this right here is proof that it is working and they are terrified of this peaceful movement that is making them look like shit, rightfully so.